Hey, Dasa here from M Method. On Monday, February 20th, we're gonna open registration for our new cohort training, Flow School Fundamentals, where you master the fundamentals of hearing and pronunciation. In this video, I just wanna to talk to you a bit about the seven fundamental skills that we train you on, we listen to recordings of you on, we assess you on. So by the end of the program, if you have mastered these seven fundamental skills, your listening comprehension, your speaking confidence, your accent, all of these fundamental things will explode out and you have a much easier time connecting with people and picking up your target language. So I'm just gonna kind of freestyle a little bit and talk to you about what these seven fundamental skills are. Um, so I have them written down here on this page. We got motor control, tactile discrimination, phoneme articulation, phonological awareness, syllable segmenting, rhythm syncing, and melody matching. These are the seven fundamental skills that we develop and test you on in this program. So let's talk a bit about each and what I mean. So motor control, motor refers to movement. How do you actually move your body? Well, we contract muscles. And part of the difficulty that people have when they learn a motor skill like speech compared to motor skills like juggling or playing piano or anything else where you might use your hands, we can see our hands, we can get that immediate feedback, so it's not a mystery. But because we don't see what's happening inside of our mouths, people tend to think about pronunciation, articulation as this big mystery, but it's not. We can illuminate what's happening inside your mouth, first with the mirror, which we make heavy use of in the program, but also I help you visualize things at the anatomical level. So when you go through our program, you learn how to visualize the entire speech system in your body which you never look at, but it's quite cool to learn about and actually get a practical understanding of. So, you know, we have air in our lungs that's pushed out through our trachea, through our larynx here, which makes our voice, and then coming up out of either the mouth and the, or the nose or both, um, and then being manipulated by our tongue here. So all these different muscles here are involved in speech articulation. So if I take our man's uh, teeth out so you can see more clearly, Oh man, and uh, I'll take his jaw out too. All these muscles here, we have intrinsic muscles in the tongue that allow you to go like this. We have extrinsic ones that pull your tongue back and forth. The posture and position and shape of your tongue determines the quality of the vowel sounds. Uh, and then of course, when we're making different content, then we're moving this to make contact with different parts of the roof of our mouth or also our lips. Um, we also have to be aware of what's going on with our lips and our facial muscles. So, for example, those of you who learn French, you might be more aware of the nasal vowels, sorry, the uh, rounded vowels, which are made with your lips, uh, and this part as well. Uh, 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 all right, so all these things, don't be intimidated by it. I walk you through each one and you go through a special technique I created where you can access the neuron that activates each of these muscles. And then all of a sudden, everything becomes crystal clear of what's happening inside your mouth. So you can control your mouth, control the muscles there just as easily as you can control the muscles in your finger so you can create any shape that you want with it, right? So that is a quick overview of motor control. Next, we have tactile awareness, tactile discrimination. So you're moving the muscles to move your tongue around, move your lips around, um, and much of the activity for consonants is occurring when your tongue is making contact with the roof of your mouth. Um, but as it is right now, you probably don't have much discrimination. What that means is that if you touch here versus touch here, you won't know if you're touching C or E or G. Um, meanwhile, in your tongue, you don't know if you're touching using point two or point four. It's all kind of like a blur and vague inside of your body because you never think about it. You've been speaking your whole life and never actually thought about it. You're about to think about it in this program. By the end of it, you're able to finally discriminate between two points. So I can say, put tongue point number three to C. Now put tongue point number four to F. And this becomes super useful for the next skill, phoneme articulation. What is a phoneme? It's a basic unit of speech. So if I say to you, hello, I can break that down to eh, uh, oh. Those are my, my phonemes. 
and a phoneme is articulated by you moving some part of your tongue, lips, soft palate, and having it potentially come into contact with another part where you feel it by touch. So with motor control and tactile discrimination, you can very precisely articulate each phoneme in your language. And the way we teach you that in our program is we get, again, super precise. Every single phoneme, every single fundamental sound that exists in your target language, we have here mapped out. You can see an MRI scan hey. of someone doing it, as well as listen to a bunch of words that have that word in it. Come Eso. E. E. Lleva. Lleva. So space for you to mimic and practice. So through this process of with your increased motor control and tactile discrimination, we go through each phoneme and we do an audit. We listen to you as you try to pronounce each one. And then whenever you're off, even in the slightest bit, we can instruct you very precisely and say, hey, you need to, you right now you're doing three to D, we want you to do three to C, right? Doesn't mean anything to you now because you don't have the motor control or tactile discrimination. But once you have that, now you can very precisely articulate each phoneme. This is the fundamental sounds you're actually hearing when people are speaking. If you can't articulate phonemes, you won't be able to understand what people are saying to you, right? Then you have phonological awareness. So right now, up so far, we've been doing these individual phonemes. But then now, how do you actually recognize that in the context of speech, in the context of words? So if I say to you an English word like caterpillar, I have phonological awareness, which means I can break caterpillar down into its syllables. Caterpillar, caterpillar, right? And then each of those syllables I can break down into its phonemes. Ca, k, a, ter, t, er, pi, p, i, ler, l, er, caterpillar, caterpillar. That's phonological awareness, being able to uh, segment and break each thing down. I can also, uh, phonological awareness also includes um, elimination and substitution. So what if I got rid of all the vowel, all the consonants in caterpillar? Caterpillar, k, a, t, er, p, i, l, er. No more consonants? A, er, i, er, a, er, a, er. Get rid of all the vowels. <laughs> kind of hard to do. Uh, substitution. Will I replace all the vowels with um, O's? Kotopolo. Right. Replace all the consonants with f. Faffer. Faff. Faffer. It's <laughs> a bit trickier. Uh, anyway, so we play around different games with that. Um, what's going on here is that through these activities, you're organizing speech in your head. So when you hear a new word and you want to mimic it, you don't have to have someone write it down for you. So you can, that's what writing is for. That's why people rely on it as a crutch because they want to see things organized. The problem is written language is not the same as spoken language. It's slower and it's different. You want to have the capacity to enter into the streets, start speaking with people, having conversation. They give you new expressions, new words, and then you can organize it in your mind, articulate it with your mouth, and then keep mimicking, keep flowing. This is the fundamental skill that allows you to rapidly learn a language and learn it deeply with an authentic accent, all right? Moving on, the next thing we have is syllable segmenting. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like in our program. This is a new technique that we've developed. So people speak, when they speak fast, they don't enunciate the words. They're kind of doing something you can't really capture in the normal written language. So we've created a new type of transcription system based on the symbols of the International Phonetic Alphabet which you also learn in our program, um, that breaks things down. So if we take this phrase here from um, Ecuadorian like speech this guy gave. La no es una alternativa de desarrollo. Right, so I was like, well, how do I learn that? Well, first of all, we can slow it down. La no es una we can slow it down and um, you know, make it a bit more easy to perceive that way. Una de la no es una all right, so don't, don't be intimidated by these symbols. You learn them in our program, but the reason why we have weird symbols here is because there's all these new sounds that don't have a dedicated letter to it within Spanish. So we have these, um, it's called the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA symbols, 
which are mapped one to one. So you can, ah, that's exactly what's being said here. But forget all the letter stuff. This is the cool part. This is what syllable segmenting is about. Taking that speech and breaking it down into these pieces. No es un alternativa de desarrollo. Right, so if I wanted to practice saying this phrase, I would mimic these segments like this. No es, no es un alternativa de desarrollo. Yo. Right, so this practice you do in a program called segmenting, Speech is fundamentally like dance moves. You're just dancing with your tongue. But what are those dance steps exactly? You need to be able to see them slow and practice them over and over again. We do the segmenting technique with students, and all of a sudden, these phrases are super fast and unclear. We break it down. You do bit by bit, increase the speed, and all of a sudden, you're, you're flowing and mimicking exactly like the native speaker said it, and it just comes out of your mouth naturally. It's a very, very powerful technique. You just have to go through all the other steps to learn it. Um, then the final ones we have are rhythm syncing and melody matching. So this is a fundamental layer of speech. We are focusing so far on the articulation layer. How do uh, we make the different vowels and consonants? But those vowels and consonants are nested within a melodic structure. So I say melodic structure. I'm going right. That that kind of underlying musicality to speech. So if we take a phrase like. Uh, this in Spanish. De su dueña tal vez olvidada. And we um, want to tap into just the, the rhythmic layer, which is to say I want to synchronize my body with the timing of each syllable. Then it can sound like this. De su dueña tal vez olvidada. 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 All right, so what I'm doing there is I'm feeling each syllable. And as weird as that practice may seem, when people do it, it boosts their listening comprehension like crazy when they really get accurate in timing. It's allowing you to adapt to the natural rhythmic cadence of the speech. And then you also have the up and down movement of pitch. So we have, for example, um, this audio we created where we muffle things so that you only really hear the melody. Oh, here you go. You keep listening to that over and over again. Um, then when you come back to the normal, the melody should pop out to you much more. De su dueña tal vez olvidada. Right. That's super important. I cannot over exaggerate. I can't overemphasize how important this aspect of speech is. When you can tap into the melodic layer, understanding becomes more intuitive. You're more emotionally connected to people. This is the container for everything else. And articulation and meaning, all things start to fall into place. And if we put all of these skills together, the ability to control and feel everything in your mouth, articulate each and every phoneme in your language, be aware of how those phonemes are sequencing and organizing in the context of real speech in real time, um, being able to segment the syllables so that they fit in your mouth and they flow off of your tongue elegantly, and then putting all that together into the package of rhythm and melody fits all that together to create the natural flow and the sound and cadence of your target language. And when you have all these abilities, you can go into conversation, watch a TV show, listen to radio, listen to a song, and mimic it. Hear it with crystal clear clarity, reproduce it exactly the way a native speaker can, and once you're locked into that physical acoustic flow of the language, then you can start to understand and engage and do other types of things if we train you in later parts of our program. Uh, but this is the fundamentals. If you are lacking in your fundamentals, you will always be stuck, dragged back in your language. 
So if you want to join us to shore up your fundamentals in your target language, then come back to this page or I'll put the page in the link if you're watching on YouTube and we will open up registration Monday, February 20th and close it on that Friday and start training on that following Monday, February 27th. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope you'll be able to join us.